Okay then, so we're going to put an above elbow uh, back stab on this time. Uh, we can use these for various uh, different reasons. Again, they're in the book here. So the indications for using one of these are supercondylar, fracture of the humerus, or it could be after reduction of a dislocated elbow, fracture of the head of the radius, or fracture of the head of the radius, um, and the ulna could be fractured as well. It's a very painful injury, and also there's a, a risk of having um, damage to the nerves or circulation around here as well. So we need to go through our usual tests, making sure the patient's comfortable, do a cap refill here to make sure the circulation's okay, uh, look for any wounds, see if there are wounds that might need addressing first of all. Uh, then always have a second person to help you as well, to hold the arm in place as well. Because it's quite painful for the patient, but also you need to keep the position in um, nice right angles there, 90 degrees, close to the body, with the palm facing the body, which is doing nicely for me because the patients often try to help you and uh, will move the arm out of place. The palm's just going to keep correcting that for me. So, again, we'll start off doing some padding. And I'm going to start at the top here, and this time I'm going to need two rolls of padding. And what I want to do is do two layers around the top here. So what I want to avoid doing is having the end of the bandage just right in the crease there as well. So to bring this oops, a little bit further down there. Keep it nice and straight. Continue going 50-50. to do the shaping of the hand in the same way as we did for the below elbow back slab. So I need to make sure I've got a double turn back there, gather all those ends in and then we can finish off. Okay. I'm also going to put some slow padding on. I'm going to cut out two circles this time. Okay. So one of these is going to go over the ulnar styloid just here. Just stop that rubbing. And then we're going to put one over the lateral epicondyle there. Right, so I'm going to put my two bandages into soak, and I'm going to then measure my bandage, foster bandage. Okay. This time I need to take um, measurements. We want to be about two fingers underneath the axilla there. So again, it's not going to rub underneath. I'm going to leave a little bit extra this time because sometimes the plaster does shrink away. And I'm going to go down around to the metacarpal heads. We are on 60. I'm going to use a 20 centimetre cross the bandage this time. We're going to start, take the sharp edges again off the top where it's going to go close to the axilla to stop that rubbing. And then I'm going to do some shaping for the hand. So again, just around the thumb, there, I'm going to cut a semicircle out, and then I'm going to soften that edge as well. I'm just going to check that it all looks like it will fit nicely. long there but I think I'm going to leave that on just in case it shrinks away okay and then I can just trim that off if it does leave that ready to go 
And then I want to take some of the smaller plaster this time. So this is just going to form some reinforcement over the elbow here. So it's just going to go around the back of the humerus, just underneath there. So I'm going to use a 15 centimetre this time. And we don't need to shape that at all. Get my plaster bandage. Get closer to the patient. Pop that in. And then I'll just take a little bit of the excess water out, but I still need to keep quite a lot of moisture in there. I'm going to start off this time just at the metacarpal heads there. Away too much, so that's not a problem. I'll just put the top of that around it at the same time. Quite easy to cut while it's still wet. And put a little bit of a wing there. If it's small, you can leave it on, otherwise, we can just trim that off there. Molded on there. We don't want to leave it too long before we put this uh, slab on because it will start to dry and we need it all to laminate together. So it's going to start around the back of the humerus and then towards the mid radius and ulnar. Make sure that's nice and smooth. Edge. Okay, I'm going to start around the wrist, just secure plaster bandage on. Put it around the metacarpal heads there. Uh, catch all those ends in. This is why it's quite important to have two people when you're putting one of these plasters on because the pan is just keeping an eye on the position all the time. Not to stop it praying. Bring it back around. Oops, it's tight off away from the fracture site. <laughs> I'm difficult to catch in it. Just tying it on top of the plaster there. You don't want it too tight so it constricts the plaster. But we do want to make sure it's nice and secure, otherwise the bandage will come off. Need to recheck the position of that so it's a nice right angle is at the elbow, palms facing the chest. There, is it rubbing at all in there? Got no. nice two fingers in there, you move your fingers around, move them, not rubbing at the top there. So. No, that's fine. Lovely. So, I'm going to keep that position held just while the plaster hardens off a little bit, and then I'm going to clean 
lines up. Okay. And then before we pop the slinger, we just need to obviously check the cap refill again, make sure that is still okay. Check that the mask can move her fingers and there's no air rubbing. And then we can pop a sling on there, make sure she's got no pins and needles or numbness, and the colour of the skin is good. Uh, depending on where the fracture is, we can actually finish a plaster just uh, around the, on the styloid there. So if the fracture is below, and it's a mid-shaft radius and ulna, we need to make sure that the hand is included. If the fracture was above the elbow, so a supercondylar fracture, we could actually not include the hand in this plaster, but just make sure you finish up the ulnar styloid, they've got some padding around the ulnar styloid there, and that's where you would turn back. So you don't want your ulnar styloid rubbing against the plaster, but you could leave your hand free. So we're just obviously left as comfortable, got a sling on. Again, we just go through all the paperwork again. Um, she needs to come back to fracture clinic, Maybe a completion, maybe not a completion, so we're not going to promise anything, but you need to come back for review, so we need to make sure that that is uh, checked again. Um, go through all the usual advice, you know, just in getting pins and needles, numbness, any discoloration of your skin there, any soreness or rubbing, you need yeah. to come back to us, uh, but give us a call first and we'll tell you what to do. Okay. okay? And no sticking anything down there, no pin, uh, no pins and needles, any rulers, anything like that, so just try and bear with it and itchiness should, should go off. Okay. Allow it to dry naturally, no hair dryers, or put it in front of the fire to dry. It will take 48 uh, to 72 hours to dry.